Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Javier Bustos. He is my colleague, Felipe Espinosa. And we are here to talk about our open source solution for DNS monitoring. As far as you know, I think at this point you know that DNS is one of the most key ser infrastructure services of the internet. So even if you are running your name server at the oldest server in the high place of the, your rack, uh, here we are come here to present you a lightweight, faster, real-time uh, infrastructure for DNS monitoring, so you can run it in your second oldest server at the same rack. A little bit of context here is uh, where well, we come from Chile. Uh, we work for a top-level uh, CCTLD uh, administrator. Uh, Nick Chile is sort of medium-sized uh, name service administration of top-level domains. We have around 26 nodes, 27 in 10, 11 countries. And also, uh, we are operating to Anycast no, uh, clouds, and we have also two external DNS clouds. As a mid-size, Top level domain operator, we receive around 3,000 queries per second per server. So that, that is the numbers we, we have. Uh, the main question is why DNS is DNS monitoring interesting? Uh, of course, as, uh, if your job is uh, administration, a top level domain, of course, it's, it's important to, to monitoring. Uh, Maybe most of you remember this uh, happened in 2016, and in the last uh, three con at San Francisco, where a lot of talking about this issue. But even if you are not a two-level domain administrator, uh, well, yesterday uh, Jeremy Blosser gave a very good talk about what happened when your monitoring fails. So if uh, Jeremy is here in the room. Uh, Thank you very much. Hello, and thank you very much for your, your talk. Uh, if you are, were not there, you can watch the later uh, via internet. So, given that why is DNS monitor interesting, now the question is how is DNS monitored? So, uh, by now, the main three not custom uh, solutions are DSC, DNS stats, Entrada. None of them are real time, and none of them are lightweight. In fact, Entrada uses up. Hadoop cluster for processing, and I don't know if anybody used really a Hadoop cluster for processing and, uh, and analyze their DNS data. So uh, given that none of them were real-time solutions, we made our custom real-time uh, data analytics, call it uh, RATA DNS, for real-time analysis in, in Spanish. Uh, we capture and reduce information maybe based on uh, with uh, or DNS monitoring uh, based on TCP DAM, TCP LIPS. Uh, everything was stored in radar skew, and we made our custom presenter for the information based on what we think that DNS operators we would like. But the truth was, uh, the funny fact was, uh, they didn't like it because the interface was too whitey and shiny and clean. And I think that most uh, operators like more the black and green interface or something like that. So, uh, but at this point, we were uh, thinking, and uh, men, uh, I think we, we are reinventing the wheel. I think that there are more op open source solutions for doing this thing. And also, we were thinking, and men, do you know how much effort we will have to put in to give support for this three-layer solution of DNS monitoring? So we start to see uh, how we can have the same uh, uh, features, uh, only integrating well-known uh, open source solutions. So that's all the work of my colleague, Felipe, who will start explaining now what we have now and uh, how we solve this problem. Felipe. So, as Michael says, uh, we started looking at the open source solutions that they are currently used to monitor the different part, different systems. And we looked at there are many available open source solutions that 
capture different information that uh, allow us to present information in a pretty easy way for the different person in a team to see the data. And we started looking for some of the meta information about the DNS package they are receiving. Um, some of the information we are looking at is the, like the data we are receiving, where is the package hitting the servers, and the API versions, the prefix, the network protocol we are using, the size of the package, and also some of the information inside the package of the DNS, like what's the question, what domain we are looking for, the, what OP code, class, response, response code we are receiving. So. We start looking at the process, uh, separating every problem in different stages, in the capture of the information, the storage of the information, and the visualization. And every one, every one of these stages or layers, uh, we find some sort of requirements to look into it. Starting for the capture layer, we wanted it to be secure and to, to be fast and low cost, because being so, so close to the DNS service, we are very limited in the resources we have. For the storage layer, we want to be unitary. We want to be able to see every package separated from each other so we can analyze it independently. We want it to be compressed, we want fast to process, and we want it to be scalable because we are adding every day more and more each load in the system. Finally, for the visualization, uh, we want it to be fast access, we want it to relevant information, and provide us some uh, type of alert of uh, different abnormalities that can happen. So we start looking for different software for each layer. Starting for the capture layer, we, we use some of the most common use for capture information from the network. That is PacketBit, Collective, Feeble, DSC. Here we saw that many of them promote that they are used for monitoring DNS. But seeing the different features they have, they didn't support all the protocols that DNS used to transmit. For example, we we seen that packet B didn't support IPv4 or 6 fragmentation of the data. And that's something very important because some of the very high load packets we're receiving are, are from IP fragmentation. For this reason, we started looking to develop our own solution, at least for this layer. And we developed a DNS sampling, an open source software that is for the DNS packet capture where we base it on packet bit and go past the DNS. Uh, we implemented the IP fragmented assembly, TCP assembly, and we also provide our direct connection to the database system so we can have a better performance. Next, for the storage layer, we, um, we look at some of the most used time series database systems like Prometheus, Druid, ElasticX, and OpenTSDB. And for, for comparison, we did a small benchmark for a use case, where we measure the CPU usage, primary memory usage, secondary memory, and the query time of the information. We use a, we use a very low spec machine to do this test because we didn't have too many resources, or at least not many organizations have too many resources to put into monitoring. So it was something very important to us. We did a small test using something close to 3,000 packets per second that is the load some, one of the servers receives, and some of the benchmark results we got so is was the ClickHouse. Android was the one that performed a lot better than compared to the others. Uh, we also see like Elastic like, stop responding to those questions about the monitoring, that, and that was pretty bad because the moment that we have the higher load is the moment we want to get all the answers the fastest time possible. Um, also, this, this type of results we got was because the cardinality of the information we got for the DNS package was very high. For example, we have like 5,500,000 domains and everyone is one different tag in your system for monitoring, and it was very taxing for systems like Prometheus or InfluxDB. So 3,000 is not that many packages. So we decided to step a little, and we got to 10,000 and 40,000 some packets per second. And we saw that really start falling off a little. We got like 20 seconds for every question we requested. But ClickHouse managed to stay very low, increasing like 0.15 to 0.2. So we decided to use ClickHouse as our storage medium for the monitoring system that we managed to do. 
Finally, for the visualization, we looked at plugins that are implemented for ClickHouse. Uh, we found that Grafana was the only one that have a very good plugin system for connecting to ClickHouse and showing some of the information we got. But we had to modify it a little so we can we can have the alerting system working. So with this stack, I'm going to show you some of the results that we got. And starting up. The architecture that we we are going to use was we got the DNS server where we do, we run the DNS sampling and uh, doing the capture of the information. Where then we transmit the information to the storage layer and ClickHouse servers that it can be only one or you can use multiple in a dis distributed way. And finally, we use Grafana to uh, aggregate the information and show it finally to the user and generate different alerts. To test this type of system, we do some load simulations. We do did a very small one using a, a 7,000 packets per second. And we run it to 36 hours. And we received a, uh, something close to a million pack, uh, one, one billion packets, um, storing uh, approximately 62, 52 gigabytes of data, compressing it to 7.1 tests. And using uh, approximately x13 bytes for every package, considering that the normal size is like 200 bytes. Also, we want to, to step up a little, and we run a simple DDoS to ourselves, and run it like 120, 100 uh, packages per second, and we saw that ClickHouse was only using an average of 30% of the, of the CPU that we were using. So it was a pretty, so it handled the DDoS very well. Now, some of the results uh, that we can see in Grafana. For example, we have the top query domains that we are receiving. We can see the unique, the domains name we are receiving in every second. We can see the average package size and the total package size. For example, this type of information, we can see what domains are more, more queried right now, and we, we can use it to detect some of the, some of the tags that we are going to show you later. We can also see some more general data, like for example the package, uh, the IP version, the network version. We can also see some uh, where is the package are coming from and where are we looking to send them after. Uh, we can also see uh, the question type, the query class, the response codes, and other type of information that are in the DNS package. Finally, we, uh, ClickHouse also provides us a, a small query interface where you can see every package in very detailed, very detailed information of the package. We can see uh, the domain where, the, where they are querying the information. We can see the daytime of the query. And we can also use this to aggregate all the information. Also, we implemented alerting, as we said before, where we can define some third holes and start firing some alerts in case we detect some a type of event or attack. Now, some examples about uh, the attacks we can detect. Uh, we can find, for example, what type of attack is this? Uh, this is the most of the information that other uh, DNS monitoring systems do. That they gave us, uh, we are receiving a, a flood of uh, some type of package, but we don't have too much information about what type of attack it is. Now, using our, our system that we are using ClickHouse, uh, for example, we can, if you can see this type of information where you can see that the top query domain st stays very stable, but the packages go up a lot more, we can say this is a random string domain that, uh, where the systems are querying just random garbage uh, to our domains or to servers. And the, ISP, the important thing about this is that ISPs or other resolvers don't, can cache this information so the, the queries are, are receiving directly into our servers. Also, what happened is this graph uh, we are, is the one we are seeing. This type of attack is a direct attack of a, simple, a single domain, where, for example, the query about the example.tl. So this type of attack where we have the ISPs have the information cache as so this gives us information about the attacker as is targeting directly our servers and not using an middle an middle target to get information. As a TLDR of the presentation, we are we got a working DNS monitoring solution. We're using DNS sampling, Lakehouse, and Grafana. 
And we are looking to make our, our DNS monitoring more intelligent, like using machine learning or other things like that. And also, I, I come here to recommend you use more open source solutions and try to contribute it back because everyone goes winning this for monitoring is better. And also, try to look at using ClickHouse for monitoring because it's pretty good at storing the uh, information with a lot of a lot of columns, for example, so you, you can do a, little, a lot better your job about that. So this is our presentation. Uh, the source code used for a monitoring system, you can find it like there. So thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Hey, thanks for talking. Um, in your slide about comparing all the time series databases, what was the y-axis? Uh, mostly it was a normalized uh, the benchmark. Uh, this is going back to you show you. <laughs> a little back. Yeah, it's the normalized. For example, the CPU, we got the time the CPU were using, the query time, the query event was in seconds. For example, ClickHouse used 0.15 to query, uh, the read used 0 0.2, and after that we got Elastic Search that it used like 10 seconds. We, we can have, we have the information, don't normalize it. It was easy to show it like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Less is better. Just Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you.